Thank you very much and good afternoon. Uh, so today, to start, we'll uh, go through our usual uh, review of our number of cases in the last uh, 24 hours. Uh, we have had 395 new cases diagnosed with COVID-19, 12 of which were epidemiologically linked cases, bringing our total number of people diagnosed with COVID-19 to 78,673 in British Columbia. And of those, 86 were in the Vancouver Coastal Health Region, 207 people uh, reside in the Fraser Health Region, 37 people on Vancouver Island Health Region, 24 people in the Interior Health Region, and 41 people in Northern Health. Uh, that leaves us with 4,489 active cases right now, of whom 228 people are in hospital, 62 in critical care or ICU. We also have 79,031 people under active public health monitoring and 72,781 people who are fully recovered. Tragically, over the last uh, day, we have had 10 new deaths uh, related to COVID-19, bringing the total number of people who've died from COVID-19 in British Columbia to 1,348. And our condolences go out to each of the families their care providers and communities who we know are mourning their loss. Our thoughts are with you as well during this difficult time. We do have one additional health care outbreak in the Rivera Sunwood Retirement Community, an independent living community. Um, uh, and the outbreak at uh, the Burnaby Hospital is now finally declared over. So that leaves us with 13 active outbreaks in long-term care or assisted living or independent living and five in acute care and uh, involving 398 residents and 213 staff. Although, thankfully, uh, we know that those uh, new cases in our long-term care homes in particular have dropped dramatically. Since the start of our immunization program, we've now provided 239,833 doses of COVID-19 vaccines across British Columbia. Of those, uh, 68,157 doses were uh, to people who received their second dose. And we have seen that the vaccines we have available today are doing their job. The effectiveness has been proven, and I mentioned the, the research that we've done through uh, the BC Centre for Disease Control that we released last week showing how effective it has been in preventing transmission in long-term care and in healthcare workers. We've also seen that confidence is high in our immunization programs, and we've seen um, that providing the information people need to make that informed decision about receiving the vaccine is working. And we know there are many, many people in BC who are eager to get vaccinated as quickly as possible. And right across Canada, I can't stress enough how much we are working together. My colleagues in the provinces, the territories, our federal government, um, our health workers who are working at our National Operations Centre, all of us are doing what we can to make sure we can get vaccine to everybody in Canada as quickly as possible. I am encouraged immensely by the enthusiasm, but I also ask that give us the time to make sure we're getting it right. We have not been idle these last few weeks when we've had limited doses of vaccine. We have putting together the building blocks to make sure that we can be as efficient as possible and minimize those, those inevitable bumps and hurdles that we are going to see along the way as we continue to ramp up and get ready for our mass clinics. And we are starting, as you know, with our most vulnerable seniors and elders in our communities across BC. And we'll be starting, uh, as Minister Dix has said, um, Dr. Ballum and he and I will be presenting you those details on Monday. But rest assured, things are ramping up and we will be providing vaccine very shortly. The other consideration, of course, that we've had as we have this vaccine hope is managing the pandemic that we are dealing with right now here in BC. Part of that is our ongoing surveillance and management of the, the variants of concern to see how they are affecting our communities. There have now been 16 new confirmed COVID-19 cases that are these variants of concern since our last report, making our total number that we've found in our surveillance uh, 116 cases. 
Of these total, though, only nine are currently active, and the remaining are people who've been through their infectious period. Uh, so we have to date 95 of the B117 uh, initially associated with the UK and 21 people who've had uh, the B131, the South African variant. I will also say that I, I mentioned last week uh, that we had an initial case of a, a variant under investigation that has been associated with Nigeria. We've had a second case uh, we reported on earlier of that, but the, these have uh, been reviewed. And when we talk about variants of concern, what we're concerned about is can they transmit more easily, cause more severe disease? And so we are still monitoring the one uh, associated with Nigeria. So um, it's called a variant under investigation and we'll just be keeping that one on side uh, and, and watching it carefully. Of the confirmed VOCs that we've had, 71 were in the Fraser Health region, 39 in Vancouver Coastal, and then we had four uh, in the Island Health and two, in, in, two people in the Interior Health region um, earlier on. And I understand that lots of people have questions about what these mean for our province, our communities, and of also for the restrictions that we have in place. And I know there's been modeling, there's been lots of concern. Um, I will tell you that across the province, we are paying special attention to people who are infected with these variants so that we do better understand the transmission patterns and the impact they're having on our pandemic and our communities here in BC. This, in turn, helps inform um, any changes that we may need to make. So health authorities are following up actively, as we have been doing with every case, but making sure we collect extra information on these particular variants. Uh, right now, about a quarter of them, we are unclear where they acquired these infections. And those, uh, that has remained relatively stable. And we talked as well last week about uh, uh, doing what we call a screening test on the first, uh, once somebody is positive on a PCR test, we now have a screening test that can detect whether it's likely to have one of these variants of concern. And uh, we are able now to do that in about uh, 75, 80 percent of all of the positive tests every day. And by the end of next week, um, that'll be up to 100 percent of our testing. Um, the, the other thing that is important is that all of the evidence has shown us that the things that we do to prevent transmission work against these variants as well. And that is why we all have to continue to do what we're doing. The precautions we take are equally effective against these variants as they are against the um, other strains of the virus that we have been dealing with. And just to give you an update, one of the things that we have been doing is paying special attention to when we see um, people who are infected with these variants in some of our more uh, concerning environments, particularly schools. And as you know, over the weekend, there were seven historical cases uh, of people who had been infected with variants that were identified in schools, uh, in seven schools um, in the Fraser Health region. And uh, Fraser Health has a, uh, undergone a testing program to make sure that we can see if there was transmission from any of these cases in the school system. Right now, they have, uh, as of today, they've completed 83 people have had a point of care test. So those were people who it would affect their management to know right away. And 201 people have had PCR tests. Of those, six people at two schools have tested positive. We do not yet know, so that's five students and one staff person at uh, two of these schools, at Surrey Traditional and at Woodward Hill. We don't yet know if those new cases are these variants of concern or not. It takes some time to do that whole genome sequencing. So Fraser Health is continuing to work with the school, Surrey School Board and to do that additional testing and we'll have more information as the investigation continues. Over the last month, we have been closely monitoring our new cases and our rates of transmission so that we can better understand when we can safely open up or whether we need to take additional measures um, in terms of our public health restrictions and orders. 
The seven-day moving average is one of the, the measures that we use to help um, understand what's happening over time. Our daily numbers, as you know, can fluctuate depending on testing levels, etc. So we look at things like the seven-day moving average. And what we have seen in the last two weeks is that has come up a little bit here in British Columbia. And we also look at our percent positive of the tests that are done every day and the seven-day rolling average of that. And that has also crept up a little bit to about 6.7% of our tests are positive. It's not the same across the province, however. And we know that in the Lower Mainland in particular we've, is where we've seen most of this uptick. And uh, the percent positive of people who are tested in the Fraser Health region is about 8%, so above our average. And it's about 11.5% in the north. Also concerning for us, because we need to monitor exactly who and where transmission is happening. The other uh, value that we look at, and it's uh, what we present monthly in our modeling, but we look at it on a weekly basis as well, is what we call the reproductive number. And we had been nicely trending down around the province. In the last two weeks, we started to see that move above the level of one. And what that means is that there's potential for rapid growth if we're not careful. Again. It has varied around the province. We know that this is most, uh, most important or where we're seeing most of this change is in the Lower Mainland, in the Fraser Health and Vancouver Coastal Health region. So this tells us that every person on average who's infected is spreading to more than one other person. This is something that we need to watch and be careful. It's like a tree that keeps growing and spreading. But we need to keep cases low and slow so that we can control that. We are continuing to watch these indicators and when we have confidence that they are slowing in a sustained bay way, that is when we'll be able to ease restrictions. But we are not quite there yet. We are looking ahead into a march to make sure we know when we can increase our social interactions in a limited way when we can have safe in-person religious services again or safely increase things like youth sports to provide those opportunities for as much needed opportunities for connection and for health. We're all keen to get to that point where we can safely spend time with more of our family and our friends, when we can travel at least within BC and resume some of those things that we have all put on hold for these long winter months. But with that fatigue, sometimes we know comes frustration and challenges. Yesterday was Pink Shirt Day and we spoke about the need for kindness and compassion with each other. That's something that we have talked about throughout this pandemic. And as we come on to a year, it is more relevant than ever supporting the store clerk when they remind you about their COVID safety plan, following the requests of the server in the restaurant when they ask for your information for contact tracing or remind you to put on your mask when you're moving about the restaurant. These are the things that keep us safe. These are the key things that keep businesses open, keep our restaurants open, our retailers open. And keeping um, businesses safely open is important for many reasons, not just the economy, but we know that the consequences of unemployment, of having these uh, businesses in our communities closed, has effects on our health and well-being as well, especially for young people and families. And this is why we all need to do our part to follow the safety plan so that we can continue to keep things operating, to keep things open safely for our community. It is, as always, our individual actions that make a difference collectively for our communities, our families across the province. And we know that this works. As we have this whole ramping up of our immunization program and the hope that in the next few weeks we will be in a different place. We all need to, to remind ourselves that we're in this together. But we're not all in the same boat. And it is kindness and compassion that will see us through this pandemic again. 
I ask you please to remember to be kind and to be calm and to stay safe. Thank you very much, Dr. Henry, and uh, I want to start by extending my condolences to the families, friends, the caregivers of the 10 people who passed away from COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, five in the Interior Health Authority, one in Northern Health, one in the Vancouver Coastal Health Authority, uh, and uh, three in Fraser Health. Uh, it's a, an extraordinary time, I think. We've noted this all along, but it's uh, it is a moment of sadness in everyone's life. We know that uh, at the moment, for example, uh, people will have uh, funeral ser memorial services, funeral services with uh, with uh, with eight, seven, eight, nine people where ordinarily you would expect hundreds. It is a difficult time to grieve, and we have to all find ways to support ones who have lost loved ones, both in this public health emergency of COVID-19, in the overdose public health emergency, and are dealing with other health issues and have passed away during this pandemic, even if it's not connected to a public health emergency, it is a hard time and we are thinking of you and have you in our hearts. I wanted to note that um, uh, we have released again this week and posted, I think it's posted now on the BCCDC website, the weekly uh, outbreak report on long-term care, assisted living and independent living. It's based on numbers Tuesday to Tuesday, as you'll see in the report, and therefore uh, there was one care home uh, outbreak uh, in the Interior Health Authority that was declared over yesterday that is that's still in this report. But of the 11 long-term care home outbreaks, nine of them had no new cases this week. So it's not just a question of the very significant reduction in long-term care uh, outbreaks, but the fact that the ones that we have, the outbreaks that we have in long-term care at present um, are not uh, are uh, stable and are not seeing new cases. This is extraordinarily good news. And I want to again pay tribute to our teams of public health officials and people in long-term care as well who have organized immunization campaigns. 65,720 residents and staff have been immunized with one dose, and 37,400 have been immunized with two doses of uh, COVID-19 vaccines. In addition to that, 5,424 essential visitors have received one dose, and of those, 1,382 have received both doses. We see the impact of that, and it is heartening, and it has made a huge difference for everyone. You'll also note that uh, we did uh, 9,000, or yesterday did nine, the system did 9,800 immunize, 9,008 immunizations, the majority of which are second doses, reflecting uh, where we stand uh, right now in terms of supply. That supply is getting better, as you know, uh, but we are continuing at the moment to do second doses, and a majority of the doses done yesterday were, in fact, second doses. Wanted to note, uh, we also publish regularly information on local health areas, and I just wanted to note that what we saw in the post-Christmas period was an increase and a significant increase in cases in the Interior Health Authority at, at, at times, both in cases and in hospitalizations. And we've seen that come down in terms of active cases, in terms of uh, the number of daily cases we've seen in the Interior Health Authority. And it shows, again, what we can do together as communities. And uh, I think uh, while we, uh, there is a significant number of people, and five of the people who passed away were in Interior Health today, and we still have um, more than 20 people in hospital in Interior Health, all of that is true, but it also shows that when we act together as communities, we can reduce transmission. And Interior Health has shown that in the last couple of weeks, and I wanted to acknowledge that. On Thursday, we also update you on uh, the surgical renewal commitment. Um, uh, since uh, May 9, 18th, we've delivered more than uh, surgeries to more than 90% of those who had surgeries postponed due to COVID-19. As well, we continue to schedule and deliver surgeries that were not scheduled due to the pandemic and to change the way we deliver surgeries in BC to better meet the needs of those who uh, will be identified as needing surgery in the future. Since May 18th, when we launched this initiative and the Premier launched the initiative, 70,352 uh, surgeries completed in Fraser Health, 47,723 in Interior Health, 14,656 in Northern Health, 61,191 in Vancouver Coastal Health, 
53,513 on Vancouver Island and 10,349 in the Provincial Health Services Authority. For the week of February 8th to 14th, we have uh, a ver the verified number of surgeries is 7,324, which is 196 more surgeries than the same week last year. And I want to thank everybody involved. Those numbers are um, exceptional, especially considering the fact that COVID-19 does cause surgeries and safety precautions do, do cause individual surgeries to take longer. It shows the commitment of healthcare workers uh, from, uh, from people involved in registration and booking to surgeons and surgical nurses and health sciences professionals right through our system and their extraordinary commitment and dedication. And I want to thank them as well today. In closing, uh, uh, I think we know this that we have another weekend coming up ahead of us after tomorrow. And uh, it continues to be our duty to stop the spread, especially now. The variants of concern mean we won't vary and cannot vary our use of the skills we know to keep us safe. And we know that throughout our BC effort, our hard work and determination have turned uncertainty into confidence, transformed hope into reality, and converted promise into achievement. We've shown that we can achieve when we're 100% all in and we stay 100% committed to our role. So let's, this weekend, let's stick to doing what stops the spread. Let's stick with what we know keeps people safe. Stick together in our shared effort for the ones we love and the ones we don't know, fellow members of our communities.